finally, we were waiting for that moment. I like the idea of him moving. I'm too excited. <laughs> it's a bit more rolly than I had anticipated. So we are walking to a hospital right now because we should be able to leave Mahon tomorrow morning. So we arrived at the hospital and they told us to go to this tent where we could have the COVID test. The thing is there's nobody there. Now we called a phone number and they told us call another number. How many numbers so far? Four. I just want to know when, when somebody will arrive to take the test. This is the number that I just received from uh, your headquarters, I think. Okay, so you can't help me then. No bueno. This is how you lost your time. Because after 30 minutes of uh, waiting there, outside of the tent, somebody arrived and told us that it was impossible to have a test because... We Unless don't have... we have the symptoms. Exactly. Let's try a private clinic this time and let's hope we can get what we want. <laughs> Let me give you an update of where we're at. So after running all around the city and making many phone calls, we managed to get ourselves an appointment to uh, get the COVID test done. So both Laura and I have just walked out of the hospital and had our tests oh, yeah with uh, a, a lot of planning and a, a, a lot of phone calls that's that's for sure and they'll send us the results in the next 48 to 72 hours which satisfies the marina in italy which means we could leave tomorrow morning sounds good well then in that case yeah we'd, we'd love to get across with you if uh, if that's still okay for you it's exciting times it we're is. finally doing it we're finally getting out of mahan yeah I'm super excited! Honestly, I was waiting for that moment for so long. Oh, uh, it's not so bad. You paint a bad picture for Mahan, but no, in no, fact, no. this is an absolute paradise. Mahan is beautiful, of course it is. But the fact that we have a boat for me means that we have to keep moving and exploring. I like the idea of keep moving. That's what makes me happy. Morning, everyone! So, I'm too excited! <laughs> it is 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we slept like five hours and the thing is, we don't care because we are ready to go today. We leave Mahan! She's very excited. Oh uh, yeah! And yeah, we are drinking coffee because we need to be awake. You and seem to be awake. I am. Morning. Oh, morning! Well, we have a guest on board as well today. He's gonna cross with us to Italy and yeah, I'll uh, introduce to him a bit later today. Um, we'll finish getting ready. Mahan three hours ago and <laughs> he was epic. Giles behind me is doing the captain log and Luke is sick. I've been sick as well. Um, it's very rolly and unfortunately we couldn't avoid it. Let's hope it's not gonna be like that the whole trip but uh, yeah, quite an adventure. <laughs> Hey friends, we 
We are still sick. It's 11.30. It's been five hours. We are at sea now. We can't see Menorca anymore. And of course, we can't see Sardinia yet. What can I say? We didn't expect to be sick like that. It's uh, boat life, I guess. <laughs> I would love to not be able to see this apple ever again when it goes inside of me. It's a bit more rolly than I had anticipated, but it's all about getting used to the motion of the ocean. Hey everyone, so <laughs> it's been 24 hours now that we are crossing to Sardinia. It's been very, very difficult. We are really happy that Charles is with us because honestly, Luke and I, we've been sick since we left Mahon. Uh, this is really something we didn't expect and we didn't anticipate. And when I say sick, I mean we can't keep anything. So um, yeah, it's a bit tough for a first big crossing like that. Luckily, we have a third crew member on board and he's really really helpful and uh, yeah we are really thankful for that anyway we should arrive in 10 hours there's still like 50 or 60 miles to go the sun is gonna rise <laughs> finally and that's it for now a long night I finally managed to get an hour of sleep somewhere between six and seven o'clock this morning and during that time Law was on watch and it apparently rained I slept through the entire episode we've still got about another eight hours left I'll be very happy once we arrive because uh, both Law and I are holding back on eating anything for fear of sending it overboard once again we've had that episode replay at least four times each so it wasn't particularly pleasant we really need to find a way to come to terms with the seasickness I took one pill before leaving that was more than 24 hours ago yeah it didn't really do much well I sent it overboard pretty quickly I think we've got a squall directly in front of us law thinks that that's the one that hit us about an hour or so ago so hopefully it just keeps in front of us and we don't have to go through it for a second time. And we can have a dry sail to Carla Forte. There's no two ways about it. Sailing so far offshore in the middle of the night with no traffic around is a totally humbling experience, albeit a little bit daunting. The sunrise and the improved weather brought with it higher spirits on board as we edged our way closer to Sardinia. After a night of accidental jibes in the variable winds, and even a momentary loss of bearing when we switched off the autopilot to jibe intentionally, we were elated to have a bright and sunny day too. Later that day, there was no sweeter sight than seeing land emerge on the horizon after more than 30 hours at sea. So we made it our first night 
here in the Marina of Calaforte and it is magnificent here. The buildings, the architecture, the marina itself, it's nice and spacious, very quiet. A beautiful place to stop after a very long passage. So now the focus is cleaning the boat this morning and also checking out this new uh, creeping crack cure which uh, Giles brought aboard for us, which is designed to fill in any small cracks that might be letting in any sort of water on the deck. Let's give it a try. So what we're doing is putting some of this cure into the crack at the bottom of the stanchion here, which goes just in case it's got a fracture or anything. Through and so what it seeps into the cracks and yes. does it expand? It just works like water. Ah. So it's a viral osmosis, I think, and it'll just draw it into the crack and seal it. That's the, that's the hope anyway. Let's see. If it doesn't work, you'll be free of any responsibility. Exactly. No guarantees. There is a bit of humidity in there. Aren't My Ford cabin is exactly the same. It's just because there's quite a quite a bit of a hard surface there on the ceiling as well, and just humidity from living in there, from showers, from right. kettles boiling, from breathing. Mine always gets condensation on the on the top of the up here. approach roof. Yeah, That's you'll true. find if you have the hatch open and the door open, there won't be hardly any. Yeah, right. we're having a good debate on condensation. <laughs> These are our seven tips for avoiding <laughs> condensation in your V-birth. Yeah. Step one, stop breathing. <laughs> so as you know, uh, we didn't make the crossing all on our own. We had the very kind and generous help of Giles, who is a delivery skipper. So Giles, thank you very, very much from the bottom of our heart, both for Laura and I, it was... Uh, from the bottom of your stomach. From the bottom yeah. of our guts, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It would have been... A very, very challenging trip across if it wasn't for uh, your very kind uh, help and, and guidance. Yeah, it was kind of daunting for both Laura and I. We felt a little bit incapacitated at times where we were both hanging off different parts of the boat. So um, what got you into this sort of work? Um, a couple of things really. Love of the water is always probably going to be at the top of any skipper's list as well as uh, kind of feeling like I was coming to the end of my day job, if you know what I mean. Got it. I used to work for big industry and I just absolutely hated it. What was your highlight of the trip? <sighs> my highlight? Well, it definitely wasn't watching you guys uh, on the back of the oh, boat. Oh, come on, that, that was pretty that entertaining. Wasn't that was, uh, no, my heart, my heart went out to you guys. It was quite hard for me to see you both struggling for so long. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm glad it wasn't me. No, we're glad as well that it wasn't you because that would have been tough if the three of us were all. <laughs> yeah, so that wasn't a, that wasn't a highlight. Uh, the highlight was probably um, yeah. I mean, there was some nice sailing uh, the last and the second day. Um, I think you guys started to come round to the, the the movement of the boat, which was nice for me to see your yeah. spirits kind of lifting a little bit. It was nice to see us coming round the final the final corner uh, to the islands, and I could see again you were. That, that was nice for me to see you guys had realised you'd passed, yeah. you'd passed the point of no return and brought it back. So, what what would you recommend for us next time around uh, to maybe do differently or to be prepared a little bit differently? Yeah, I think again, as as we've talked about, it'd be nice for you to go out and do uh, some shorter sails in rougher weather. Practice going down into the galleys. Absolutely. No, it was. Uh, I I couldn't see either of us, Laura or I, uh, doing much down in the galley. Every time we went below deck. We ended up coming up as quickly as possible over the over the transom yeah. and I've never seen time. people moving so quick on a boat in, uh, <laughs> in moderate seas before. But again, Giles, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, coming over with us. I really don't know how we would have done it without you, but it's definitely set up our confidence for the next trip. So the next time we have to make a, a big crossing. I wish you all the best and I might even subscribe to your channel. Who knows? <laughs> Don't feel obliged. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you, Giles. Take care. Thank you. Naturally, that was reverse psychology. And if any of you watching right now aren't already subscribed, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps us enormously and encourages us to keep on pushing ourselves and capturing the journey on film for your viewing plaisir. Giles just left uh, and what's funny is that we can see the ferry he's gonna take which is gonna watch him leave 
But again, thank you, Jayas. It goes without saying, the crossing shook us up a bit, pun absolutely intended. And with another overnight passage on the cards to Sicily, we weren't sure if we would be able to do it on our own. For the time being, we were very happy to spend a few days on solid ground before thinking about the next steps. What's up guys? So here we are in beautiful sunny Calaforte and we're expecting some heavy weather to set in this afternoon and to celebrate our crossing, Law in her infinite wisdom has uh, treated us to one evening in a nice little hotel. Considering it's been three months living on board, I think we deserve a night on terra firma. Here we are with this incredible view looking over the harbour, watching as the southerly will gradually turn to the west of us and then become the famous northerly, the Mistral. So maybe a few words about the crossing. That crossing was probably one of the most grueling experiences of our lives or certainly of my life. So the trip took us 35 hours. We were sick the whole way, right? Yeah. Until arriving here. This was the first time that we've been so unwell and okay the sea state was it was a bit rough so as you know we traveled with a delivery skipper Giles thank goodness he was on board because uh, for a first time crossing feeling so unwell I'm not sure how we would have handled it maybe the whole experience would have overwhelmed us so the main learning from this is we definitely need a bit more experience in rougher weather I think we need to be more prepared and be careful of what we do the day just before leaving. Yeah, so that's the thing, because we were planning originally to leave two days later than we actually left, and then we were toying with the idea of going with a professional skipper. He suggested leaving a day earlier so we get better winds. Indeed, we got better winds, but we got slightly higher swell, and I think that's what kind of messed with us. No uh, criticism of Giles here, it was the best moment to leave in terms of speed. But basically, yeah, we hit some slightly higher than expected swell. We got in about two meters of swell. The waves would be hitting us on the sort of starboard aft quadrant of the boat. And what happens then is, so you surf down the wave and then you twist. So this, this corkscrew motion. So you're getting great speed as you're going down the waves, but then as you twist on that final part, the hull of the boat is digging in. So yeah, that wasn't the most pleasant swell direction. But one thing I'm happy with is uh, that we actually sailed uh, for like... A lot. A lot, yeah. At, at to... least at least 50% of the trip yeah, I think was so. under sail. I think so. And it was a good wind, so yeah, that was really nice. Mm. I think there are three key learnings that have come out of this experience that will set us up for success next time. One is mindset, one is preparation, and one is determination. So mindset, you have to be mentally prepared for rough weather, you have to be confident in the boat and be in the right frame of mind to be positive about it, right? So mm. think positively about the whole experience rather than what could go wrong. Preparation, so preparation, you need to make sure, like Law said before, that we, we could have prepared better by having some Tupperware containers with food ready to go rather than having to go down below and deal with so much motion down below. As well, I think preparation is not only preparation for the crossing, it needs to be preparation even before, the day before. You have to already acclimatize and, you know, go to bed early, eat light. So yeah, a good preparation yeah. is essential. And to the third point, determination. So it takes guts to make such a trip. It's something that I admire hugely in law. Despite the challenges, she is very determined to tackle all of this. So looking at the next trip already, we've only been here for less than two days now in Sardinia and we're already talking about doing it again. So for now, 
we're going to refill our stomachs with a bit of pizza. We need to recharge the batteries, right? Exactly. Shall we? Settle into island life, settle <laughs> into la bella vita. La bella vita, si. Carla Forte sits on the east coast of the tiny island of San Pietro, a stone's throw away from the main island of Sardinia. According to local legend, it's named after a visit from St. Peter himself back in 46 AD. That said, it wasn't until the 18th century that the island was colonised by refugees from the Tunisian island of Tabarka. Out of gratitude to the Sardinian king, Charles Emmanuel III, for his generosity in granting the land, the Tabarkans named the first and only city on the island Calaforte, meaning Strong Charles. These days, locals still speak Tabarkino, a dialect unique of both Italian and Sardinian. The city boasts a charming combo of neoclassical architecture and an unmistakably Italian cafe culture. We were impressed by the pastel-coloured buildings everywhere you looked. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to stay tuned next week as we set sail to the capital city of Sardinia, Cagliari, and prepare for making the next overnight crossing to Sicily on our own.